You are listening to pastthink.com audiobook. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Chapter 33. Chao Pai seizes his moment to find a wife. Yuan Tan is killed. With his sword drawn, he advances upon the two women, but suddenly a bright light flashes before his eyes. Stunned, he asks, Who are you? I was the wife of Yuan Shao, replies Lady Lu. And who is this? demands Chao Pai. This is Lady Zhen, says Lady Lu, wife of Yuan Shao's second son, Yuan Shi. Chao Pai lifts the distraught woman up and, brushing her hair away from her face, he sees that she is of extraordinary beauty. Her face is like jade, her skin like a newly blooming flower, a beauty which could overthrow kingdoms. Amazed by her beauty, he immediately offers to protect her, and in honor of his protecting them, his father agrees that this beautiful woman is ideal for his son. With his approval they marry shortly afterwards. Chao Chao proves to be a benevolent ruler of Jizhou. He honors the tombs and shrines of the Yuan family, and relieves the people all across Hebei province of paying taxes for a whole year. He says it is because they have suffered so much during the wars. He also tries to bring in the best advisors to help him run the region. It doesn't take long for Yuan Tan to prove as unreliable to Chao Chao as he was to his own brother, Yuan Shang. Yuan Tan has rallied his brother's men and is preparing for war against Chao Chao. Meanwhile Yuan Shang, shocked by his own failure, has no heart for battle and takes refuge with his other brother, Yuan Shi. Chao Chao advances against Yuan Tan, who in desperation seeks to create an alliance with Lu Biao. Lu Biao has no great desire to be supporting what is clearly a collapsing Yuan family against the rising power of Chao Chao. At the suggestion of Shuanda, Lu Biao uses Chao Chao's own trick of divide and rule. Through an exchange of fake letters, Yuan Tan is encouraged to be reconciled with his brother while Yuan Shang is told that he needs his brother's support to oppose Chao Chao. Chao Chao is furious with what he sees as the betrayal of Yuan Tan and besieges him in the city of Nampi. In an attempt to escape, Guo Tu advises Yuan Tan to force the civilian population out and to then ride through them to safety. But he is cut down by one of Chao Chao's cousins, Chao Hong, while Guo Tu is also spotted and killed. After the fall of the city, Chao Chao has Yuan Tan's head cut off and exposed. He gives orders that no one should mourn his death. However, one man does. When he is arrested and questioned he says he served under Yuan Tan when he was in charge of Qingzhou. He left Yuan Tan's service because he told him publicly that he disapproved of the way he ran things. But he still feels that he should pay his respects. Chao Chao has ordered that anyone disobeying his order not to mourn should be executed. But moved by the true sense of loyalty and honor that this man shows, he pardons him and even gives him a post in his new administration. With Yuan Tan dead and buried, it is not long before the other brothers, Yuan Shang and Yuan Shi, are tracked down. They have escaped to the desert in a desperate bid for freedom. Chao Chao is determined to go after them, even though it means entering such barren lands and encountering hostile local tribes. This becomes even worse when, with war still raging in this hostile environment, winter comes. Meanwhile the two Yuan brothers have taken refuge even further into this strange land and have come to the prefect of Liaodong for sanctuary. He, alarmed at the thought of becoming Chao Chao's enemy, has the two brothers murdered and their heads sent to Chao Chao. So it is that the rule of the Yuans ends forever. Having conquered the north, Chao Chao can now start to plan his assault on the south. One night, standing in a tower on the wall of Jizhou with Sun Yu beside him, he sees a golden light shining out of the ground. That can only mean treasure is buried there, says Sun Yu. Chao Chao gives orders for the spot to be excavated. So what is it that is found? Let's find out.